Senior U.S. officials have traveled to Venezuela on the quiet in an effort to bring home detained Americans and rebuild relations with the South American oil giant. A meeting between officials received little coverage and was only mentioned during an awards ceremony hosted by President Nicolas Maduro, who has previously been blackballed by the U.S. It's an important delegation that arrived in Venezuela. They're working to continue talks initiated on March 5th to continue the bilateral agenda between the U.S. and Venezuelan governments. Relations between the two countries began to deteriorate rapidly in 2018 when the U.S. refused to recognize the re-election of President Nicolas Maduro, Washington instead referring to opposition leader Juan Guaido as the legitimate president. Venezuela was also excluded from this month's Summit of the Americas, which was held in Los Angeles. However, with oil prices on the rise due to Western sanctions against Russia, Washington has been forced to make overtures to its rival. Earlier this month, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi could no longer even remember who Juan Guaido was. The person that you recognize as uh, the leader, democratic leader in Venezuela is not here. What do you think about the absence of Juan Guaido here? By whom? Juan Guaido. Mr. President, please take this message back to your family. Prior to Washington enacting sanctions against Caracas, Venezuela was one of the U.S. biggest oil suppliers. But since their imposition in 2019, imports from the country have almost declined to stagnation point. However, a 50 percent jump in oil prices and the worst inflation in the U.S. in years appears to be leading to a shift in its policy. Vice chair of the Libertarian National Committee in the U.S., Arvind Vohra, thinks the current crisis has forced the U.S. to realize that anti-Venezuela sanctions have not worked. I think there's two things. First, there's a sort of self-created shortage over here. When you create sanctions on other countries, you end up punishing just normal people in those countries, and you end up punishing yourself. Oil sanctions are hurting Americans as much as they're hurting anybody else. So first, this is literally punishing yourself for somebody else's bad act, for somebody else's bad actions. But the second thing is I think Americans and even the American government is starting to realize that sanctions are unnecessary to prove the utter failures of socialism. Venezuela has the largest confirmed oil reserves in the world and due to their just sheer incompetence have been struggling. The problem with putting sanctions on Venezuela is it lets people say it's not the socialism, but rather the sanctions.